weekends here so you guys get to go out and shop play and have a lot of fun while I get to sit here in front of the air conditioner 97 degrees for two weeks in a row and it's about to get worse next week so it just heat and I don't get along uh, it just takes all the energy out of me so I don't feel like doing anything I come out and quickly do something in the morning and then by 10 o'clock I forget it but I did manage to squeeze out a couple of things here for you guys um, first up you guys have seen this clamp that I made a while ago in a video so first clip I get to use this for the first time and it really really worked out second up uh, I've had a number of emails from people asking my opinion on calipers a lot of new people who need to buy a caliper for the first time so I'll just give you my general opinion, my experience, what I've seen, learned, whatever on calipers, digital calipers. Um, next, I'm just kind of playing with the bandsaw again. Um, there's a lot of emphasis always put on speeds and feeds and it seems like every time I turn around it doesn't matter. I mean there's tables and charts from professionals so I'm sure it does matter but uh, I'm watching CNC videos on YouTube and they're running an end mill at over 10,000 RPM and I don't know how the end mill survives it no fluid but just flies all the finished best finishes I get the speeds and stuff are way off the chart so this is just kind of maybe food for thought on what I'm seeing and now going to be doing on the bandsaw uh, and then last up, um, <laughs> kind of a kick, um, please, this probably is dangerous, do it at your own risk, I'm not going to back anything up, but it is a blast, it's fun, and it defeats um, the requirement for rigidity <laughs> in your lathe when you're turning, but um, it's it's really cool and i'll show a picture in here of the product so um hope you guys enjoy and catch you next friday i hope i have something <laughs> to zoom in i hope this thing works you guys have seen this thing on the mill here that holds the handle well i had a little stop guy in there this goes in this hole with the spring and it pushes on it but I had made it out of aluminum and the tip wore out so it wasn't working anymore so I took a piece of um, welding rod stainless steel machined the point out of it to hold it guess what <laughs> it holds it because the, the 70,000th part is in there now I can take this to the grinder to clean it up so awesome first time I've had to use this tool and it works because there's no way you can hold that and grind it a lot of people what's my opinion on digital calipers and with respect to price because you go on Amazon for instance and you see prices all over the place um, so my take this was the one I bought uh, Fowler yeah it says right there um, didn't know I mean it was just I just started um, with my hobby here and this looked good this is right now this is $35 on Amazon for a six inch but on all calipers every one of them you you look at you'll see the spec on it and they're only accurate to plus or minus one thousand they are repeatable in my experience so if this one say is always minus a thousand everything you measure is going to be pretty much so minus a thousand but um, it can vary the description on this one says um, it's uh, got a half a tenth on it but it's again it says the accuracy is only a thousandth even though it's got a half half of a tenth um, so my opinion though you know you if they're all you can look at the spec on all of them you go all the way up to the really expensive two hundred dollar ones they're still plus or minus a thou 
So if I were to just kind of show you, you zero it out so the jaws are clean. I'm sure it zeroes because dirt and grease can throw that off. If I take the 0.1 block, which is really 0.10015, so this shouldn't see the tenth. And if I put it in there, you can see this guy happens to always be low, 99. If I take just for grins and giggles um, to be able to see if that half thousand works. This is a 1.004 uh, gauge block, which happens to measure at 0 0.10055. So hopefully that five should light up. Let's see if I can get it there now. I'm not going to do it, huh? <laughs> well. It's not doing it this time. I had it do it earlier, but all right, fine. And it's still a thousandth of point two. Where are you here? Point two. That happens to be right on it, huh? Nope, it's a half down. So it's still within tolerance. Point two, point three. Point three is point three zero zero two. It shouldn't see it. Again, it's just down by a thou. So I can go through all the gauge blocks. It's not going to do much of anything. Here's 0 0.4, 0 0.3995. So it's pretty darn accurate. And this is my workhorse. I use this guy in the shop all the time. Yeah, I hope the numbers came out in the video. Well, I'll see when I watch the video. I'm going to have to re-record this. Um, this has been my workhorse, and I know if I'm doing extremely accurate work or something where I need to know exactly the size, I don't use this. I'll use a mic. But otherwise, this is good enough for 99% of the work that I do. Looks like the lighting's pretty good here. It's still a heat wave, and so the chops closed up to run the air conditioning. Um, making the second... Um, constant force piston top of the column for my first mill and this is what killed the original blade cutting this big a chunk uh, the original blade that came with the wind but just kind of a curious note I did all the calculations you know you put a black mark on the blade you run it for 60 seconds counting how many times it passes by, you know, it's a 56 and a half inch blade, so you know your surface feet or whatever per minute. You go and look up the tables for aluminum steel, and the dial up here on the speed control, you use number one for steel, and slow as you can go for steel and um, stainless and so on, but you use four, number four, for that gives you the correct speed technically to be cutting aluminum and I was thinking um, you know I'm watching all the chips come off snow whatever how fast it's coming off nobody tells you exactly how hard to push down on this so I'm trying to push just enough where I see significant amounts of chips coming off and I'm running at four but then I started thinking, you know, what happens if you slow it down? So I took it down to one, and that's pretty darn slow. But I'm on, what am I on? I'm on two right now. I'm getting the same amount of chips coming out, and it's moving down a lot faster than it was before. I know this is going to be a lot of noise, but I'm not sure if you can see the chips coming out, but there they are. And I'm just barely, not barely, I'm probably a couple of pounds. I'm not even resting my entire arm on this thing. But I can see it moving down really fast. So, I don't know. Um, go with what technically you're supposed to do, or... Because I'm thinking this is probably less wear, maybe, somehow, on the blade, on the saw itself. But it's it's doing good at number two. All right, 
this is just kind of a proof of concept here. Uh, recording this a second time is the first time. Camera's over here looking and my hand's completely in the way. Um, what was I thinking? I've seen a lot of people making all those fancy tools for making balls and things like that. So I started thinking, you know, if you can turn wood on a wood lathe, freehanding it, can you do it on a metal lathe against metal freehanding it? So everybody knows this plate. I think you've seen that the video I did on um, trying to make a grinding attachment for the lathe. And so you just bolt it down. It's a pretty solid platform. Um, and then I just quickly ground. Again, this is proof of concept, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time honing this thing and playing with it. So it's pretty crude. But I was just thinking, you know, can you freehand doing this? You can already see it's pretty nice. But um, so I guess I'll shoot it again and do it. There. Uh, let's see. I gotta grab it. All right. I can't grab it now. But yes, it, it works quite well. <laughs> so I got this tool post that's in the way here. But you can conceivably make, look at this, just goes right in there. You can make a tool that has a lot more flexibility than this. Actually, I can take it out this way and do it over here. Right? Yep. So, it works. So if I spent a lot of time getting the plate to height or making tools, because I was thinking I can actually make some holder here, like the regular holders that you've seen. Let me turn this off. Like these guys, where I can have set screws on the bottom, set screws on the top, and I can actually angle the thing and get it on height. So in other words, um, you can angle the tool running that set screw up and these down and then you can adjust the whole thing to put it wherever you want. Let me try it with this light on. Uh, bring my magnifying glass in so I can see what's going on here. You know, there's one part of this cutter that's sharper than the rest, so... And then it just starts working. There is the spot. But you can make, um, I had one out here just to see what the height was on it. You can make things like this and just go in. You can freehand all kinds of knobs or different designs. If you're making spinning tops, you can do some really wild stuff. So I think I am going to pursue this. And because part of this was I was watching Ox Tools, Tom Lipton, making forming tools. And the tool he made, it didn't look like it had relief here, but nothing on top. And it didn't even look like it was sharp. And he was just going into brass like it was, was nothing. This is way too low, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I wouldn't even try this. It'll suck it in probably. So here's an idea for you guys. If you want to spend some time grinding some tools, making some things, it's just... It's really nice. I like I like how it came out. And it's smoother than all get out too. You don't even have to sand that. So ideas. Just thought I'd do this for fun. It's a little bit closer of a setup, more on center, but an existent round cutter. See how I can do here. It's working out pretty good. I mean you can take some stuff off, let me tell you. face isn't very flat, so it's kind of hard freehanding it. I'm going to keep all the junk off the bench, but... You should be able to dig straight in. Yep. To make a ball, huh? Wow, nice. 
Yep. Wow. That's starting to hurt the fingers. <laughs> Pretty crazy what you can do here. Yeah, that definitely hurts the fingers. What's the other side look like? Oh, way too low. Uh, let me see if I've got, because now the other cutters are too high. So this one just happens to kind of line up here. Yeah, I guess you don't have to push that hard to kill your fingers. I can't tell you though how much fun this is to just do. Yeah, I probably could wear gloves too, which would save my fingers some, you know. Keep in mind, the top of this thing has no relief at all. But it seems to be doing the job. Yeah, look at this. It's just going in. This is indeed fun, guys.